Hey, Matt. How you doing today? Good. How are you doing today, Charles? Good. Welcome to Strength Hammer Episode 7. Did you call me Charles? The strongest of hammers. <laughs> you gotta throw Charles over every once in a while. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, uh, this is just me and Matt Hayward, usual co-host. Uh, we're only missing Neil because we didn't invite him to this one. It's okay. I'm going to get him on the next one. It's just going to be me and him. You're not going to invite me? No, you're out after this. <laughs> and eventually, yeah. eventually we'll try and get Sean on the mic. <laughs> Have a conversation with him. I may just wake up uh, real early, drive over to his house, and just knock on the door and wake him up super early. And as soon as he answers the door, just go like live on YouTube and just start podcasting from there. <laughs> yeah, just record straight in the face. No exactly. questions asked. Yeah. Yep. Or all the questions asked. No, no, no breathing area. Just. <laughs> I was going to ask boxes of priests, but I can tell none. <laughs> <laughs> Hot topic. Uh, but yeah, um, I just wanted to get on and just uh, have a conversation so people get to know you a lot better, Matt. Um, mostly because we, we've da- touched briefly on where you started in this hobby and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to let you go deeper and just chat and like I said, let the conversation evolve where it may and maybe even get into uh, your current and pretty, pretty, um, uh, what's the word? Substantial. Mm, substantial <laughs> project, yes. With your custom K- Caradron Overlords, that's called a narrative battle tome. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a battle tome for me. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to play play you with it. And if you beat me, I'll just bring more Daughters of Cain until it balances out. That's fine. I've already started. Everything's starting at five up, five up. Uh, plus one rend, so uh, that's I'm, uh, that'll be version one until you're bringing like four daughters, and then <laughs> I'll bring out the real one. And <laughs> Matt, here's my war cry daughters of Cain list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take out your two K. All right. So you know that's one thing I don't think I've asked you. What do you? Uh, what are your current thoughts on uh, war cry since it's been out for a while and levels have kind of settled. I really enjoy it as that fast, fun, quick way to, one, build an army that's very small and unique. So mm-hmm. if you want to try something different, I didn't. I did Daughters of Cain, but I was able to <laughs> I was able to like make them very characterful, uh, yeah. each and every one, which I really like. And like I said, the time I really got to play this was at uh, Nova Open last year. And just, it's fast, it's fun. Um, you get really close with, with, with your opponent because the board's so small. And I just like that personal connection you got because you're rooting for each other and you're just kind of having fun whether you're telling a story or just kind of playing the game. So I, yeah. I, I really enjoy it, uh, not to mention the fact that uh, the, the new Kane <laughs> Warcry uh, <laughs> Warband, I think it's, yeah, will, will be uh, hopefully coming out here relatively soon, the Kainite Shadowstalkers. And I, I can't wait to get those. Well, I, I'm so interested to see what the what the release schedule is going to look like. It's either they're going to just stomp their feet in and be like, "Nope, schedule stays exactly the way it was," or it's just going to be a vomitorium of just <laughs> wait, wait, they don't have that much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, just as a heads up, this is May the fourth. So, May the fourth be with you, everybody. Um, but yeah, uh, so we're all still in quarantine, but things kind of are opening up again. Maybe. Oh, yeah. So, still, uh, so, so GW's, the web store still isn't open in our area yet. Yeah, but uh, they are shipping. I, I know a couple of people stateside that had orders in before it got shut down that were not shipped in time that started shipping today. So that's good that's news. Good. Yeah, so I, I don't think it's going to take much longer. But yeah, I wonder, I wonder what they're going to do. Are we going to have that... I can't see it being like a, a, a vomit of everything all at once. I can see it being a more rapid releasing the yeah, plans I, I would, as opposed to like the four or five week release of of lumineth we were expecting to see we might see two <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i'm i'm concerned because the closer that that was like we got the daughters of cain the war cry and then the underworlds if those get released right next to lumineth it's like uh money it's not that Flowing. I mean, I got a little yeah. bit of money set aside from selling that Drukari army finally, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm i going to buy Kane before I buy Lumineth, but I do want Lumineth, so we'll <laughs> see. 
we'll figure it out as we go. Well, I'll tell you right now, if uh, if you're uh, if you're in, you know, if you like your your stock exchange sort of things, uh, I'd tell you right now, uh, start buying Alphads, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got plenty, I got plenty. Um, but no, I, I I see. I don't mind. I don't mind the the cow motif. Like I said, the only model in the whole range that I, I want to make changes to is Teclas. So, well, I said is as far as um the the cow heads uh i I think it's it's a it's a it's definitely to me a butterface unit (laughs) (laughs) um again like i said the hammers i feel like i would have liked something a little more elegant out of an elf uh, but it's not the end of the world i wouldn't complain about it if that was the only thing uh as far as the the bull helmets go i think they could have either went pointy helmet or bullhead <laughs> <laughs> not both with tassels <laughs> not both not both i think that's um that was asking a little much well see the the dwarf the fire slayers took all of our all the axes so we couldn't have had axes across this army <laughs> so i mean and, and swords swords are just at this point they're they're so pedestrian in the mortal realms everyone has a sword <laughs> yeah again like i guess the uh i don't know I forget. Did you play? Oh, what's the name of it? The Lord of the Rings game where you play as a ranger in Gondor versus all the orcs, and you possess them and take them over. Oh, Shadows of Shadows, War. Shadows. No, I didn't. I never played that one. So, <clears throat> your uh, uh, spoilers for the first ten minutes of a game that's eight years old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get possessed by. Um, you know, I can one, never remember. one of the Elven Kings. Is it one of the Elven Kings? You get possessed by the elf that taught uh, Sauron how to make the rings. Oh, that's pretty big. Uh, how that? Get he has a real. Big? I don't know, but he has a super clunky name. There is no flow to that name at all. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, he's a blacksmith. Yeah, but so he has like if you look at his hammer, it's it's still very sleek, um, but it has like that uh it still has that elven feel to it so like i said that's kind of my only my only takeaway uh, at the end of the day it's it is what it is now again um i know that there was one image that showed those uh that unit with a uh, two-handed hammer mm-hmm. and the head on that looked awesome I'm like, you should have led with that and then went, don't worry about the dual wield stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, weapon swaps are should be fairly easy to do if someone yeah. really wants to do that. I, I'm kind of curious because I see all that rock and, and part of me, like the old World of Warcraft nerd comes out and says, man, remember that time that uh, I, I went and farmed out all the Draenei crystal looking gear for my Blood Elf Paladin? Like, I could make that, but... <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of work painting, and kind of want this to be. I want Lumineth to be my uh, contrast army, like not fully yeah. contrast, but majority contrast. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think as long as you do, I think as long as you avoid the one fit pitfall that a lot of people do, where they just go, where they bought into the GW oversell of yeah, you know, one and done. You know, as long as you use that to do your you know do some layering and do some shading and one as long as you put something over top of it to bring it down no one will even know oh yeah no uh i took a uh extra high elf sea guard model that i had um and uh tried the test scheme i want because actually the last lumineth rundown that they put out um they talked about the realm of Haish and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, they put in uh, the the faction, I guess, sub sub faction that I want to play within it. Um, and the color scheme is this beautiful, like bold yellow, and there's like a red, and like the the armor is like like a I don't know, like an eggshell blue slash green. It's it, it it's on the uh, there's a picture of it on the website and yeah. Man, I saw that. Like, like I knew that was. I already knew that was the um, sub faction I wanted to play, just from playtesting. Yeah. Um, 
and when I saw the Armish game, I'm like, yes, that is exactly the opposite of my Slanesh, <laughs> <laughs> which was this pale, very highish themed look. I was just like, yeah, I need to do something a little different. Because originally I was going to just use that well, like... Slanesh practice, the Slanesh theme is practice to, oh, yeah. to paint these guys when they came out. But now I painted that, I was like, I'm done painting that. <laughs> <laughs> see that's one thing like um whenever i first saw them i was like oh that paint scheme i need to find something i can apply that to <laughs> oh yeah yeah you love um, that you love that typical like the what's oh, the, yeah. the lumineth standard paint scheme we should call yeah. it yeah yeah the well again like i said necessarily as far as like the blues go i don't i mean that, that i'll take or leave that i can put in essentially any pastel cool color um to make the same feel but that like um that white i still even know how to describe it as just kind of like a warm white um Mm. and that super um uh, oh crap it's the opposite of saturated i guess unsaturated super unsaturated gold that they use yeah uh i'm still dying to find out what gw is going to say on how to paint these things I mean, it'll be in the Lumineth book because they always put the yeah. little paint splatters in there, so that'd be good. Well, we will see. Uh, we'll see uh, Peachy doing some uh, doing some tutorials bright and early. Of course, I don't know. Like, I I'm sure uh, he's you know all their painters are amazing painters, oh, and I'm not yeah. taking anything away from there. But like, I feel like their their tutorials have kind of dropped off a little bit. Uh, I, th- I don't know if you watched. Um, I, I, are you talking about like the 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 daily like the small videos like the five ten minute yeah. ones? No, I haven't really kept up with those. I have noticed that GW has moved back into like that high level quality. Their um, their uh, oh, what's it called? Their type, their style of painting that's escaping me. Wow. <laughs> with like the hard edge. Are you high. talking about like heavy yeah, heavy yeah. metal? Heavy metal. Um, yeah. they've really leaned back into that because. You know, for a while there, they were definitely going a little bit more like lower on their standard in the pictures, more of like what is achievable for an average hobbyist. But now things are yeah. going. It's like, well, you make the best models. We want to see the best paint jobs, and they're kind of going back to that. So, at least on that front, I've seen that shift, but not not in what you're saying. Right. Well, yeah, on the videos, it's like, and it's one of those things. It's like they always skirt around the harder paint schemes. Like, say, like one of the things that I always think about because it drove me nuts up until, you know, just, I don't know, two, three years ago was the, uh, dark angels, Deathwing terminator. Armor. Oh yeah. I'm like, how do you possibly pull that off? Like my eye just couldn't see the, the specifics in the color shift, mm-hmm. um, of that again, once again, just that slightly off white, a little yellow and like anytime GW did, cause GW did a couple videos about that, but it was like, here's the easiest way to get that. And it was like, go with white, put on That's um, Sarah from sepia or something. Yeah. It's like Sarah from sepia and then layer with screaming skull. I'm like, no. and then they show the result. <laughs> I'm like, that's not, I'm like, I I heard what you said, but I see how it looks now, and it doesn't look like the picture over here. Uh, so I'm hoping it wasn't until that till they released their airlines and they released uh, Terminatus Stone, that is the yeah. exact color. Once you put a single uh, thin shade of sepia on it, because that's that's when I finally repainted all mine because I could get that color so quickly. Yeah, they did the same thing with an edge color. Uh, there was an edge mm-hmm. color that's the exact same. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is why I couldn't do it, because you didn't release a color. <laughs> <laughs> Secret mixing in the background. Let's, of course, I... Um, that's the interesting thing. Well, that's been... like, I, I've used a little bit of contrast, base technical layer, and airbrush. Because like, uh, like, all the Citadel, like, they're all just slightly different from each other. So it's really nice to uh, just buy what you need as far as color. So I'm glad that it's all out there in some fashion. That's one thing that that I like to tell people whenever whenever painting or whenever paints come up, uh, especially people that use GW paints, because um, you know it's like as soon as you start straying from GW, you're you're off in the 
in the abyss now. <laughs> <laughs> You're cast aside, and you need to get get help from folks like Vince and. and oh yeah, he throws your life raft, life raft, CK Studios out there to help you find your way with Vallejo. But yeah, the, so like, there's um, uh, let me pull it up here real quick. So there's from the airline. There's a gold that has no equivalent in any of the other instead of that. Um, yes. Hmm. Yeah, hold on one sec. Let me yeah, well, pull up. I mean, GW's gold, like, I the only gold I really like is Retributor gold because it covers so easily. But uh, on, yeah. on the Slanesh army, I used uh, Vallejo, like, liquid metal on the silver, I think is what it was. And oh my goodness, was it so good! <laughs> <laughs> Vallejo liquid metal so good. Um, it's Valdor gold. I don't know. I've never it's, used uh, that. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know if you remember seeing my uh, hammers uh, that I made. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's I use that color for them, and it's just <laughs> this awesome, super subtle. Um, it's it's almost more subtle than um, Rune Priest bronze, but it's in the gold shade. Oh, all right. I mean, I have a feeling there's a lot of that going on in in Lumina. It could be. Uh, maybe I'll pick some of that up. I have uh, I have two paints to get right now that I'm running low on, scarily enough, and it's Mornfang Mornfang Brown and Lead Belcher. <laughs> <laughs> I because uh, Lead Belcher is the other the other GW metal I like. I, it covers really well, and then yeah, yeah. There's so many of the the gw metallics that i like that um i say i like their coverage but but i mean all, all the painters i know are right like you can see the pigment in it so easily and i understand why like cost and everything okay. Okay. um although at the same time if you put down that lead belcher and you take that vallejo liquid metal right over top of it and ooh, it looks <laughs> so good um but yeah we'll see hopefully lumineth i'm just hoping lumineth come out soon mostly because i don't have anything to paint besides Nova Terrain. <laughs> you need to get that done. How many pieces we got? 50-ish? 50-ish? We need like... There's a lot. Those are rookie numbers. Well, the, the goal for this, <laughs> and, and big big thanks and shout-outs to two people on this. One, Anthony Polcastro, who's 3D printing all of this. Um, and two, uh, Vince Venturella for help setting it up. Um because Nova Open, the, the one thing that is terrible <laughs> still, the, the last thing that we need to, <laughs> besides running a perfect flawless event, which who knows what that will ever happen, but um, the there's a thing called the Nova L, which is a f- quick little foam thing that was put together when Nova was exploding, often used in 30k. We got a bunch of it because we needed tables we were going quickly. They're hideous <laughs> in this day. Yeah. And it, like, they serve their purpose. I don't, I don't know, and like, the work put into them is great. They've We've used them the past few years, but goal is to replace all of those, and we're probably yeah. going to do that quite easily. So, right. and these like these these things are just amazing. Like I need to I need to glue them together, you know, paint them. Like I said, it it won't take long to knock out, but I'm just not in a terrain mood. I hear you. I hear you. I uh, I have yet to be in the terrain mood. Period. In the <laughs> uh, you know, twelve thirteen years of my painting experience. Uh. <laughs> like I said it's it's uh. I don't know. Like I said, I sold that Drukari. Are you, even though I'm in the mood to paint like an army, it wasn't the Drukari. So like, the, I think Lumineth will fit what I need. And I originally was thinking like, no, nah, I just won't get them. I'll just get the book. Just read the book and then build, build oh, it slowly. But I'm like, it I, has the elf keyword. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I need to get it. Like I need like it's it's like a uh, Sylvaneth. I, I need to get it just so I can put Teclas on the table because he's an elf god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I have a whole Sylvaneth army just so I can have a Lariel. <laughs> <laughs> I can't justify okay. having a model. I have to justify an, a model by having an army. <laughs> I've been thinking about what I would do with Teclas because it's just one of those enigmas, you know? Like I, you, you mean like with the sculpt? Well, so for me, the sculpt isn't all that bad. I mean, I've seen... I, I, again, I play Middle Earth where, you know, everyone <laughs> has like the worst face sculpts in the world. Um, yeah, and let's, let's, let's be real. It's a the thing's a technical marvel of what that that piece is 
no, it's just a, there's just a few things that everyone finds personally like for one, whatever reason slightly off well i said i mean i try and think about because for me it's the pose like and yeah. it's not even necessarily the pose it's the um it's the conjunction of the sphinx and Teclas. like if they were to figure out a way to have him like coming down behind the sphinx or something like that because i honestly i don't mind the t-pose um <laughs> See, you know to me he looks like he's either descending or ascending and that's what i think they're trying to go for yeah i i just i think honestly what got me like thinking back on it more and more is before we saw the model we saw that artwork of teclas yeah where he was flying and but he was in motion so two things about it one he was very in motion with that pose and two his face is nothing like the sculpt face <laughs> which is fine like you know you never expect it to be right. exactly the same but it was a drastic difference um yeah he took my pretty boy techless when i was like oh you know good on him he finally finally got over his his you know i'm this i'm the sick twin and all that he's like i'm a god now i can look good and it's like mm, you could I'm but you're sure choosing not to find you, uh, i'm sure you'd find you like a like a pretty boy chibi boy face somewhere only yeah. anime oh yeah, yeah. guy well <laughs> I'll, I'll find something. I have I have a few ideas. Like I said, I just want to I want to adjust his face um, to be more of like a sleeker, pretty boy elf, and then I want to just move his arms. I, I don't think I can move his feet. They're just kind of like locked as they are. But I want to move his arms to give him a little bit more motion. You should buy the uh, you know hundred hundred and fifty dollar uh, Sanguinis model from Forge World and use that face. Throw the rest of the model away. Just take that face, man. <laughs> For the, uh, since there's no video on this one, um, I'm thinking about that. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I said there, there'll, there'll be something. We'll, we'll come up. I'll come up with something. So, really fun. Plus, it's a chance to do some converting, customizing that definitely outside my range. So yeah, I think that was the other thing I wanted to ask. So, like, do you? I know you said you want to do contrast. Are you planning on doing like? Are you are you planning on like pulling out our our uh, you know our syllabus and and try to get max points? Uh, I mean, yeah, I should. Why not? Army wide like, conversion, army wide freehand. I, I have some ideas for the freehand. I'm not sure where. Like, it's kind of like a classic Kyle thing. Just put like little mini dicks. Mini dicks, yeah, tiny, over. tiny dicks all over now. <laughs> um, just some, just some elven runes mixed around, like on like, a, like a, almost like it's embroidered on cloth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Like I said, it's we'll we'll see what level I want to get into because, like I said, the other thing too of this release schedule changing, it's you know, like, am I gonna like? I, I'm just curious because you know, is this gonna be like out really quickly and I'm gonna be overloaded, or is it gonna be like? I have like a month for these three units to paint, <laughs> which takes not much time for me because I'm fairly quick at getting tabletops quality. But we'll see. Are you gonna Are you gonna put a uh, mega gargant in uh, as an ally? Get a mega gargant all elven looking, big pointy ears. No, no, I. <laughs> I mean, Give him uh, buy I... one of the mountains, take his armor, put it on the. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That'd be a pretty cool idea. I I don't I doubt the scale is going to be the same, but uh, well, that makes it even funnier with a with a gargant. I mean, that's <laughs> that's true. That's true. We'll see. Like I said, I, the gargants. I've never been a giant fan. I love what that. Sorry, New York. What? Sorry, no. New York. No, that's a sports reference. What? <laughs> I think New York has bigger concerns right now than. One guy not giving a crap about the Giants. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it's gonna be one of those things. Like, if I ever reach a point where I'm like, I got nothing I want to paint right now, maybe I'll get the Giant that will fit in my order armies, since they have con confirmed that they're gonna have that, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's not something I'm like, oh, I need to do that right now. It's it's. it's like, no. Yeah, can we just get a half a pot of Gulliman flesh and uh... <laughs> <laughs> dip it, dip the Giant. <laughs> So that's um, actually one of the projects that I'm working on. Um, I bought the the Wiz Kids 
um, ship. Like they came on a pirate ship to go with D and D's release oh. of that. Uh, oh, I forget what it was called. Something, something about. Um, it's basically like a pirate campaign. Yeah. And so the ship is about like a foot and a half, two feet long. Okay. Um, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, I definitely want to contrast this because I don't want to have to worry about doing all this over and over again. Right. Um, but I'm like, okay. So I don't have a painting space that I can cover two feet worth of area for, for whenever the drippage obviously is going to occur. <laughs> oh, I mean, just come over to my house. So all, yeah. my, all my tables are just covered in paint because that's what they're here for. <laughs> my little hobby space. <clears throat> yeah, which, by the way, if anyone wants a pirate ship, this thing looks really cool. And also the, uh, the deck is grid. It's gridded, so you still have the one-inch squares for uh, anyone that uses models. Oh, Chuck, I know it's not your preference. No, <laughs> no I just never, never caught on for tabletop role playing to use models. I like having a model that represents who I am because it's the modeler in me willing to just make some cool <laughs> conversion. But yeah, never, never got used to using them in the game because I felt like extra rules on top of it. It's like, no, just let me swing my sword. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's. Um... Most of the time, I'm okay with theater of the mind, but like sometimes I think about other classes. Like, there's one really fun class for fifth edition, uh, a subclass of fighter called Battlemaster, mm-hmm. and they have all of these like special abilities and martial abilities stuff that they kind of like wanted to keep over from fourth edition. But a lot of it is five extra feet of range, push someone five feet, you know. It, there's a lot of you, lot of visualization, um, and I think if you just did theater of mind with the whole thing, you're going to have either one of the weakest or most powerful characters in your game. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I see that. Just don't have them play, but, play that character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, there's been several times where we've been stuck to theater of the mind. I'm like, not today, friend, and I put the character away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, if it's again, I know you know, but anyone that would be listening um, on like online character builders and stuff. I have about 20 to 30 characters ready to go of all different builds at any time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, man, it's kind of sad. Cause we were, we were playing D and D with uh, uh, myself, my wife, you, uh, your girlfriend was going to join us. She didn't in that first session. Um, Sean, a uh, guest and sponsor of the show. Um, rush for hire. Rush for hire. Go ahead, give us commercial. All right, hold on. Let me think. Um, let's see here. Because these will all okay. be re- these will all be recorded now because I fixed it. Yes, good. All right, now. So every once in a while, you just gotta sit down, open up a can of beans, eat it raw, get farts for days. But you can't be painting while farting. Rush for hire. <laughs> get those models painted while you're farting. <laughs> sure, sure. We'll go with that. Um. <laughs> But yeah, we got we got like a first session in, and I was all jazzed, and then then I, f- I forget. Then like Adepticon was coming up, and we were getting all that, and well, I think we we're getting sick. The virus, yeah. yeah. And then now this virus has just closed everything, so it's like uh, I just want to play. <laughs> Although you're going to be starting, uh, we kind of already started, but getting characters set, Wrath and Glory, the new Wrath and Glory set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to work on. I, I have all, you know, everyone said what character they're going to be, and we're just going to do something short, something fun. Um, and again, short and fun for me means that any character could be killed at any second, uh, so don't uh, <laughs> don't don't get any tattoos. That's, <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, I, I plan it's going to be anywhere between like three and five sessions. and That's fun. Uh, get used to the rule yeah. set, yeah. Right, See. right, have some fun. And then... Uh, uh, Soulbound will come out, and then we can forget all about it. Mm. Heck yes! <laughs> oh, Which I think yes. whatever, whatever that comes out. Oh, by the way, I know you don't follow that, so everyone, Cubicle Seven. I follow Cubicle amazing. Seven just just to see their art they put up. <laughs> yeah, they are amazing. They are such a passionate company. Mm. Uh, you know, we've I've met them at um, Pax Unplugged, and it's like it's. You know, I know a lot of people give them guff for their release schedule and always pushing things back, but it's mm. like, it's quality stuff, right? I mean, it's like it's like 
12 guys. Like, it's not a big studio. I, I don't know exact numbers of how many people are there, but, um, you know, we played, uh, I did a, a whole campaign of The One Ring, which is a Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth setting set between The Hobbit and uh, The Lord of the Rings. So there's a lot of, like, turmoil bubbling up and a lot of orcs and whole nine and it's a very creative system um and same thing whenever they did the warhammer fantasy they um oh they're so smart because they they literally just went you know what the edition prior to uh i want to say it was fourth edition whenever they the previous company tried to get a little snazzy and made it like a little bit more of like a board game yeah um the edition prior to that they were like that's what Warhammer Fantasy was. So instead of coming up with their whole brand new thing and everything, they just polished that up and re-released it. Oh, yes. Uh, That's good. And it's a beautiful system. Actually, I just sent you, I'm not sure if you saw it, they tweeted today, Cubicle 7, um, the collector's edition of Soul Calibur. That's where I was heading to. (laughs) I just want to make sure you saw Uh, that, because I'm like, you're not on Twitter much, so I don't know. So the, um, the last time I bought a, uh, collector's edition role-playing book was for whenever fantasy flight games did death watch okay um they had this awesome thing where they were going to do like a leather cover with silver bordered um pages and everything was like a faux parchment uh and uh, they were like, the reason why we're going f- like not real parchment is because parchment will break down over time this won't Right. Uh, it basically gets rid. It's it's more the resistant to the oils and acids in your fingertips and whatnot. Right. Um, and then the other thing that they do is they took. And don't quote me on this one. I, I'm just going off a of memory. The, it's a very old game at this point, where they were taking old um, World War II ammo crates that the UK still had left over and were converting them into the collector's box set. Hmm. And then on top of that, on the inside, they had a um, kind of like the writ of your character being uh, written into the Death Watch. And they had a calligrapher, like custom handwrite every single one. And so you could choose what name you wanted and everything. Um, and so it was super expensive and I was super happy to buy it. I'm still glad I have it. Um, but then whenever I sat down to play it, I'm like, you pizza eating bastards, you want to touch my book? <laughs> <laughs> so that's so, yeah, because there's, there's two types of people in, in the, the world of books is people that get the collector's edition stuff, like you, and you're like pristine, <laughs> keep it that way. I will buy a collector's edition Battletoe, let's say. Yeah, I'll carry around with me everywhere, I don't care. Let it get beat up. Books, is, bo- books need to have soul. <laughs> well, again, but it's, 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 he holds up his flawless. <laughs> Lawless character in Overlord's collector's edition battle tome. Yes, it's uh, barely been opened. That's <laughs> um, well, again, so so I actually ended up buying a, a regular player's handbook as well, so the, the the everyone else at the table could use that one, and I had my pristine one. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's good. I'm the yeah, chapter master. This is mine. I saw this one, and I um, I was like, oh, I might have to buy another collector's edition. <laughs> I it's don't know, a, man. It's it's a good one. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I the the game. I'm a little wary about where the game is gonna come out. What do you mean? I, uh, the like the system. I'm kind of wary about the system. There's a lot of things in there that um that have me have an eyebrow raised and my eyes narrowed, uh, such as like having classes or archetypes that are gear dependent to define who they are, such as um, uh, the Endron Masters or Endron mm. Riggers. Like, as a DM, I might not want my dwarf sputtering around in a balloon being able to go to any heights, you know, <laughs> at all times. You know, the same thing with um, the, the Aideneth. What if where they are a giant eel isn't appropriate for the setting? Like, <laughs> <laughs> am I now taking away from what that character is? 
That's up for the, you and the players to decide. I can tell you, I'm yeah. playing a witch elf or a hag queen. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine. Does the witch elf have a name? <laughs> Actually, it won't be Tayrathi for the witch elf. <laughs> The, it'll, show, it'll be a member of the Terathian cult for sure, but it won't be it won't be Terathi. <laughs> yeah, I, be um, someone dispo- I will not let you kill my my OC character because <laughs> I know you will. I think you should be uh, being the game master for the for the first Soulbound. You're the one that knows the setting all that well. <clears throat> uh, I could do that. I have no idea. I don't mind. I I know 40k real well. Age of Sigmar, not so much. <laughs> Yeah, I have, a, I have a. I could. I could do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, so I looked at it, and if it was me, the problem is, is like the GW release schedule and the production of this game did not line up. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> like, we're about to release this, and you get to play as these weird classes that don't necessarily make sense to work together. Uh, and then they're like, "Hey, so this is Sigmar," and they're like, "Oh, come on, man." <laughs> <laughs> But this, uh, what's going to be is, is uh, Cubicle Seven's going to release this. Lumineth are going to come out, and everyone's going to be like, "I right. want to be a Lumineth Realm Lord," and they're going to have to put out like a FAQ free character <laughs> immediately. <laughs> and like, God, I hope this is right. <laughs> and we're like, "Screw you! You play as a stupid." Uh, uh... Oh, and that's the other thing. Like, you have like they still have um, the warrior priest in there. Well, can't play that no more. <laughs> I mean, he still has rules. If you find him on, yeah. I mean, they'll always have rules. It's just not great rules. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, yeah. I could, I could, I could, uh, yeah, game master that for the first. I, I, yeah, I could think of a story. I could start working on something. I was going to pick up the uh, the book anyway. They said I wasn't sure yeah. if I was going to go collector's edition just based upon timing of release, but I was going to get the book for sure. We'll see price. We'll see price. I really like the. Um... I really like it, and I really think it, it, it'd go real well with my collection of other books, but uh, I'm not going to go to the poorhouse for it. <laughs> no, no. Like I said, I got plenty of other stuff, so that's not uh, not going to be a collector's thing I need. Like I said, I don't know, I, I, I'm just going to take us back to Lumineth. Let's let's get off Lumineth. Let's, let's, let's focus on you, Matt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... Am I not loom enough for enough for you? Is that is that what you're telling me? That... I mean, you are a mountain. You are a silent <laughs> mountain. Oh, actually, here I need I need all the viewers to answer a very important question. This is to help Matt. Can a centaur sneak as a rogue? It's a very important yeah. question. I I'm I say yes. You say yes. Uh, Matt's uh, Matt's current dungeon master says no because who of the characters can't sneak. So, yeah. if you are listening we're... and you can answer that question for us, please let us know why we're right and Matt's current DM is wrong, so he can play the centaur rogue that can charge and back attack and do all <laughs> other crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, the, that was so that I need to touch base on that. So once again, going back to the bunch of characters that I have made up, um, one of the ones is a rogue centaur, and I realized that there's nothing. And this is D and D fifth edition, correct? Yeah, D and D fifth edition. Yeah, uh, so there's nothing that is um, there's nothing that's preventing a centaur from sneaking. There's nothing on, in the rules that say they get disadvantaged. And nothing, none of that. Uh, and then on top of that, there's a feat called Charger uh, where it. Re- it puts the charging rules back into the game, essentially. Yeah. So, and then there's nothing that states that you can't sneak attack if you moved or charged. So, <laughs> you can technically have a, um, you know, the, the centaur that just charges all over the place and does the sneak attack damage and just um, gets the, uh, you know, if you get a crit, now you're you're doubling your weapons, you're doubling your sneak, and then I think the weapon damage or the charging only adds to damage. So it's not exactly a min max thing; it's more of a visual uh, treat. <laughs> yeah, it, it it would be well worth worth it. 
But yeah, uh, to our lovely audience, if you could answer that question for us, we'd be eternally yeah. grateful. But um, I said, let's uh, let, let's get more more focused on you, Matt. Just in general, um, what's your what's your origin story? Where'd you come from? Did you was gamma radiation? Uh, no, no, no. It's um, uh, like yeah, uh, you know, I was born at a very young age. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, I follow. Uh, <laughs> Seems believable. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, as far as that goes, it's uh, it was really just. And it, uh, you can go like go like Warhammer hobby, also like your D and D. Yeah. Know, well, I said I mean, as far as like as far as like the basis of geekdom goes, it's I've always just kind of been a little bit more introspective, as far back as I can remember. You know, like I remember, uh, I don't know if you remember like Nintendo box art <laughs> that had no relation to the game itself. Um, Mega Man 1 stands out <laughs> predominantly. Yeah. Uh, and I would sit there while playing the game trying to figure out how to correlate the box art into the game. Because in my mind, I was assured that these companies had their shit together and they were all <laughs> working together. You know? <laughs> and then you could become an adult and realize nobody has their shit together. Yeah, no one all has just guessing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I said, so that was, you know, it all started with, you know, just Nintendo, like every, almost everyone else at this point. I and not, um, not, you can't say that. I started with Sega. Well, it's not my fault you're younger than me. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> but, I mean, that was my, my transition. I went from Nintendo to Sega Genesis. So you went uh, Sega to Nintendo? <laughs> <laughs> made it easier well, when well, sonic when sega failed and sonic just went everywhere i'm like okay cool <laughs> so what was funny was is we went sega um i don't even necessarily remember why the reason was but um i remember you know for like the next christmas or the christmas after uh i asked i asked you know for a Super Nintendo, because one of my friends got a Super Nintendo and i really liked it and was different and you know wanted more options and my mom was like no Absolutely not. Not in any way, shape, or form. And so I never got one. Uh, but then, you know, at this point, I, I, I was actually working. Uh, so I had to have been late teens. We're talking, this is now like the PlayStation 2 is out. Yeah. Uh, and I, I find a garage sale that's open, and someone's selling the Super Nintendo and a bunch of games for like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. So I'm like, sure here you go buy it i bring it home and i shit you not my mom's like i told you you're not allowed to have a super nintendo you had to choose between genesis super. i'm like are you kidding me i'm pretty sure the the statute of limitations is up on that one and she was <laughs> so mad oh that's good <laughs> but i was like oh i bought it at a garage sale and i didn't get a receipt so oh no no <laughs> uh but yeah yeah that was uh but yeah, I mean, as far as that goes, whenever like the actual like geekdom started really kicking in, was definitely D and D, second edition. Back when I was, I think I was eight. Uh, so we're coming up on thirty years of role playing at this point. Wow! Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, it was just such a great uh, creative outlet. You know, it was uh, I was had like dorky stories and ideas just piling up in my head and <clears throat> no offense to the people that do this, but um, no one wants to hear about your character, you know? And so the last thing I wanted to do <laughs> was sit there and just talk to random people about random ideas that I have, or even my friends, you know, they're not going to want, like everyone has a limit of how much you can put up with. And then my character did this and, you know, uh, so whenever we actually started playing D and D, it was an outlet for all that. It wasn't my character did this. It was like, oh, I could make a character like this. Um, one of the examples that comes to my mind was I wanted a, a character who only used level one spells, and so my friend let me be more creative <laughs> <laughs> um, with the spells. Uh, and unfortunately, it got real dark, real dark, real fast. <laughs> oh boy! Um, whatever I decided to um, purify 
uh, food and drink while holding on to somebody's arm, and he let me purify their blood into water. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> I, remember, I remember doing stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. His parents came down. I was like, well, why don't you get to go outside for a little bit instead of... <laughs> You're like, mm, nah. Nah. I'm having fun here. <laughs> yeah. And then um, my introduction to Warhammer was, was into 40K hmm. through Dawn of War. Um, my, my friends, I told my friends at the time that, that I'd never been to a LAN party and they're like, Oh, we are changing that shit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and so we're like, okay, what are we going to play? You know, what games do we all have? Because this is before, you know, this is even before World of Warcraft came out. So it's, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, variety to essentially, team games and, and group play and whatnot. Right. So we all acquired a bunch of games. <laughs> <laughs> Yar. And uh, Dawn of War stuck out to me for two reasons. Uh, first, the amount of space army Marines. selection. Well, so again, at the time, I didn't know what a space green was. I just... Oh, true, true. You know, I just... the. Um, it was the simple fact that, like, I went into uh, Warcraft and I saw four armies. I went into Dawn of War, the I forget what the last one that came out was, but uh, at the time, everything had been released up to uh, the the pack before Sisters of Battle was introduced. Okay. But still, now you're talking about like I think it's like eight armies. Yeah. Oh, sign me up, man. That's. Um, but then the other thing that got me was the hilarious cryptic voice lines from everything. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, so I know it's not supposed to be, uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be funny or not, but I took it hilarious of whenever um, you're playing as the dreadnought and you're telling it to click up, go up the mountainside and, uh, you know, he gets the he he drops the voice line of, you know, it is better to die for the emperor than to live for yourself. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> that's a lot better than zug zug. Right? Much. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like that's. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so we got we really started playing that a lot, and we really liked that. And then my one friend uh, was a little bit more into the lore and started explaining what space screens were. Started explaining to me like. Um, still my favorite space marine weapon is the bolt gun and the heavy bolter um, see that's, that's where you get trapped because I had the same thing it, it was 40k and it was someone explaining the lore and I'm just like wide eyes mouth agape like <laughs> oh my god this is amazing I can't even comprehend I'm in <laughs> yeah yeah and, and so that's um, it, and it still drives me nuts I have one pet peeve about every Warhammer piece of cinema that has ever come out cinema? and that is cinema sure any sort of media okay okay like like if you talk cinema like it's a very different thing from like certain other types of media like some video games are great well i'm talking about like any sort of depiction honestly again i haven't read the comics so i don't want to include those but like say the dawn of war animations Mm -hmm. fan animations even stuff that gw's put out outside of that are you going Uh, to include astartes in this um, I don't remember. It's but like I said, they didn't really. The, the, they didn't get the Astartes, it, like the part of it. Yeah, the yeah, fan yeah. made. Okay, I was like, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. you're including that. I just want to make sure. Again, I don't. I'm not necessarily including it because I don't remember. But the bolter round explodes before it hits its target. It's not a giant bullet. It's a rocket that explodes prior to contact. And it's like whenever GW I've, makes, I've always seen it explode in contact. Well, I mean, so the problem is, is GW with their um, consistency is always <laughs> has never really been there, you know. But again, all the lore that I was reading was saying that it blows up beforehand. And on top of that, I was reading somewhere else where bolter rounds are actually louder than they have to be because. Um, it makes orcs die faster because they hear the explosion and then they think they're oh, I love I love those things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, but again, there also are different bolter rounds, of course. Yes. But the standard bolter round is supposed to explode beforehand. And um, but again, also on top of that, the just everyone does the boom, 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 boom. Like no, no, no. It's literally just launching rockets. No, no, it 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 launches a it is a rock a rocket. I think I believe you are right, but it's still firing it like it's like a gun bullet. It's a gun bullet that's been turned into a rocket. So it's going to make both. I get, but yeah, but like I've never seen the the bolt around go near something explode and like I've always seen it go go rapid. into them and just explode right. because then the whoever whatever just touched is just gone usually because <laughs> it's some huge thing, of course. Uh, which, since it's May the 4th, I've always wanted to see the, the fan animation of a Space Marine Librarian versus a Jedi Master. Uh, assuming that if they had a power sword, it could stop it could, a... Suck a lightsaber. Uh, which I think yeah. you could say that, because there was that stuff in Star Wars. Because like, actually, yeah, I, uh, I just picked up uh, two games super cheap. So Jedi Fallen Order and Star Wars Battlefront 2, because of the May the 4th sale. So yeah I, yeah, I I know quite well that there's things other than lightsabers <laughs> that can stop lightsabers. I knew that before, but now I'm fighting against them pretty regularly. These stormtroopers <laughs> and their vibro blades. Yeah, yeah. So I think that would be a fun. I think what it would be is if it was a surprise attack, like if neither one, if they were a foreign entity to one another and they had no idea about the other, I don't think the Jedi has a chance because again, you're going to have bolt around fire lightsaber up oh crap it exploded anyways <laughs> See, um, i don't know you gotta i'd be really interesting because there, the librarian definitely would have an upper hand because of the psychic hood would shield yeah. some of its thoughts so any like intuition the jedi might have off of the being itself would be issue but I, I, let's assume a jedi might be quick enough and realize to stop those bullets with, with the force and just move them away right. or like force shield or something Wait, like that. So that's the second scenario of where they both know what each other is capable of. Um, yeah. I, I'd be curious because uh, a Jedi's power has limits. Like yeah. there can be an extreme limit and some Jedi have shown extreme limit, but not all of them. Let's take a, a typical average Jedi versus a typical average librarian. That librarian let's say, let's could pull always it down. Let's just... say, let's say a, a standard Grey Knight in power armor. Wouldn't a Grey Knight be a better psyker? Not than a librarian. I thought the, librarian I thought... would be an HQ. No, I thought in the lore that the Grey Knights, like, they were just, they were better than the li- well, like, like, we're going I'm lore kinda here. Going, <sighs> I'm kind of going. I'm kind of going. A lesser. Hey, Sigmar a, podcast. A lesser... Let's argue 40k lore. <laughs> Day one psyker. <laughs> All right, day one psyker versus day one Jedi Knight. Just graduated from Padawan. Because the thing that I'm going to put the, the psyker always is because the psyker is much more willing to die. Mm-hmm. Like a space mm-hmm. marine is much more willing to die to kill an enemy. Ugh, like easy 100%. Yeah. And the psyker could literally just explode everything in himself by just like letting the warp consume him so that's that, that's why i think they would always win in the end because i don't think yeah, the jedi have any capability of shielding from the, the warp yeah well i would i would say that i would be fine giving them that you know we can use the force against the warp and the warp can be used against the force like if you know they they could palm the uh, psychic lightning the same way that they could do uh, force lightning. You know, I'd be have no problem giving that. Um, I think what it'll boil down to is like anytime I'm not saying that a lightsaber couldn't cut through ceramite, but I would say that it can't cut through like butter. <laughs> it would have to be like in uh, the, what was it? Episode one, I think it was where Qui-Gon had put his lightsaber into the door and was so slowly oh <laughs> uh, you'd have to like then they'd have to be like okay i have to go for joints <laughs> yeah yeah which a jedi could do because the the lightsaber is definitely better as a uh, fencing style weapon yeah uh, again i would there's a fan animation for you if you if someone wants to do that with any talent do that <laughs> and they bolt around explode before it hits them that's <laughs> yeah, there you go Ooh, there you go dude yeah but okay, so 
you start getting into the lore of Space Marines and 40K. Yep. So where did, yep. where did that lead you to the actual tabletop then? Well, so that was um, simply from there, I was kind of bored. You know, I really didn't. I, I wanted to uh, express myself artistically. Hmm. And I decided that I wanted to pick up a unit of just like one unit of something, paint it up and just put it on my desktop, you know, yep. uh, just right. have them there. That's where it starts. And yeah. It, and, and again, I was fine the way it was. It, everything was, was perfectly fine. And then um, Morgan was working at GameStop for the time at the time. And her boss actually actively played 40 K and Morgan's your girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. We already said that. I, maybe there's someone new listening to episode seven because they didn't want to start at one. <laughs> start, yeah, start at seven. Yeah, um, yeah but cool. um, but so he said the 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 damning words, you know, just a few more models and we could play. <laughs> what a dick. Um, oh no, it it gets worse. So again, he <laughs> might have to find this, and I apologize, but I'm just saying things how I remember them. Uh, but yeah, so I'm sitting there and again, at this point in time, I am working three jobs and going to school full time. Um, uh, so money is super tight, but at the same time, I'm not doing anything or going anywhere because I'm literally at school or at work. Right. Um, and so it was like Saturday night or Sunday morning. Well, no, not Sunday morning. I was. Sundays were gone for me, but that's not neither here nor there. Yeah, right. And so I would just paint a little bit here and there, you know, watch some back whenever Netflix sent you DVDs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would do is I would sit on wow, invent talking to my buddies, watching Netflix, painting a space marine. <laughs> that is nerd to the fullest, my friend. Hey, whenever I was um, main tanking for our guild, I was typically, doing that, playing Pokemon, and watching an anime at the same time. So, <laughs> oh, no, trust me. I remember my, my times in WoW being the main tank for, for a progressive guild. I've been yeah. there. Um, but uh, but so I went to him for like a lot of advice of like, what should I get and what should I build next and this and that. And so I it took me a long time, but I had about a thousand points of fifth edition Space Marines with no vehicles. Um and so I was like, "Hey, okay, I have enough to actually put on the field now." You know, I had, I think I had a, uh, I had um, two units of ten Space Marines, a uh, Tax Squad. I had a unit of five Devastators. I had a unit of ten Assault Marines, and I had um, Chapter Master. <laughs> Solid. Um. All at, all at his behest of what he told me I should buy. And so then I, I'm all excited. I run down, and he's like, uh, yeah, uh, he also played Ultramarines, and that was why I was painting. I was painting Ultramarines because I just wanted to paint what was on the box. I like doing the gold trim, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and so I finally get there. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't play Space Marines versus Space Marines. And I'm like, what? What now? <laughs> 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 I'm like, uh, you do once. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, at this point, because I had to buy paints, I had to buy brushes, I had to buy everything. I was like, you're full three hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm three hundred dollars in the hole just so I could play this game once or twice with this guy. And he's like, no, nah, we're not doing that. So I eventually coaxed him into playing, and oh, God Almighty. <laughs> So he brought two minimum units of scouts, a um, land raider, Calgar, and his honor guard. Ah, he's uh, he's not still in this hobby, is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he uh, is. Mm. And I actually saw him uh, come into the the Warhammer store, um, and holiday season last year 2019 wow i said hi and and that was cordial but we didn't really talk beyond that because because he knows that you've surpassed him you have reached chat (laughs) the chadhood of tabletop role-playing and are now an age of sigmar player 
yeah, I am Age of Signar player, and I help running tournaments at a national level. What are you doing? <laughs> Is he still working at GameStop? No, no. <laughs> he couldn't even keep that. <laughs> no one can keep a job at GameStop. You kidding? I know, I know. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you, so one thing, I'm, I'm glad that he didn't get fired over this because I would have felt terrible. Um, I started getting into Space Wolves, uh, because I started, I kept learning about more lore and everything, mm-hmm. and I wanted to do Grey Knights, but again, fifth edition, you didn't start Grey Knights in fifth edition, unless you wanted to be that guy, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Space Wolves was was the other because I was torn between the two, and I was asked, I asked him like, hey, do you have any um, transfers for Space Wolves? Because what I'll do is I'll paint what I have and then buy more Space Wolves, um, and mix them all in. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, absolutely. That, that's no problem. And uh, he said, so we had, so that GameStop had the high ceilings. Yeah. It was just a box story. And, and one of their, one of the whole units was out, uh, one of the lights. And he was like, listen, if you change that light bulb, I'll happily give you as many transfers as you want. And me, I used to work at that store, so I didn't care. But I still thought it was like my store. So I come down to the store. I start going up the ladder and this lady's like, Hey, you can't, you can't do that. And I'm like, Oh, it's fine. And I just bolt up, change the ball. She's like, no, you have to come down right now. And, <laughs> and so I come down and I realize that that's the district manager. <laughs> ah, oh, that's good. <laughs> and so then, uh, so then she, um, she takes Rob, uh, sorry, the, the guy in the back and, um, and he's back there for a while And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should leave or if she wants to yell at me or tell me I'm not allowed in the store, I should probably stay. So I stayed to make sure. And then he was like... You're a valued customer. He came out and was like, yeah, you you should... He's like, just just go for now. You're fine. He's he's told me like, he's like, everything's fine. Just leave. (laughs) Come back later. And I was like, okay. And I apologized. I told her, I was like, listen, I told her, you know, I have used to work here so i still feel like it's part of my store i was in the wrong you know and i left and again no one got fired over it so <laughs> gamestop gamestop can die in a fire yeah yeah You're terrible. oh yeah i mean again, like, let's let's not let's not leave this and, and make people think it's like because we both worked at gamestop we both are managers at yeah. stores they're a terrible company with, with terrible oh yeah business like, practices. I, and I, I feel bad for it. the people working there now that have no other option i don't want to throw the individual people that work at the store level no 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 that's uh, what i mean like i feel bad for the people working at the store that have no option and they're there especially if all the stuff that's going on because gamestop's a terrible company and, and gamestop takes the fun out of working <laughs> in video games oh my god do they like it's <laughs> almost like they sit there and go okay wait a second i look at this video footage people are smiling we need to stop that now yeah, hold on i remember when i, I walked, mean i remember a couple years ago and I, I walked in there because like whenever i left there Obviously, I was like, I don't want to touch video games for a while. And then Warhammer <laughs> really kicked in high gear, which is great because I, I love Warhammer. And, you know, obviously, I got back into video games. I still enjoy it. I'm playing them now since I have nothing left to paint. But uh, <laughs> I remember going in there a couple years ago, and they're like, hey, can we interest you in a credit card? I was like, oh. what now? And they're just like, oh, yeah, GameStop has a credit card now. And I just busted out laughing. <laughs> I was just like, oh, my God, this is the stupidest shit I've ever heard. No, no. My favorite thing in that store was, I loved the customers. Yeah, well, that's with anything. It's like that—that's for me. I, like, I had customers that followed me from store to store. They were the most enjoyable part. And on top of that, like, and, and what's funny is, like, most of the time, the except I for, can't stand the customers. except for those Karens. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that uh, yeah. I'll I'll get into that in a second. But like, <laughs> I honestly loved the people who didn't know anything about gaming and didn't know anything about video games and wasn't just trying to get in and out as quickly as possible. They were like, teach me. Yeah. Yeah. Like the people are like, listen, my son really likes sports. He keeps talking about, you know, blitz the league. It, I don't feel very comfortable about it. Can you tell me about it? And I'm like, okay. Yeah. If your son's not an adult, you probably shouldn't get blitz. The league. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You should just, get, just get mad in or yeah, whatever. Right. And then you can go over some of the other, the other options. And, and I loved trying to figure out, like I had a couple people that would wait for me to work my, my, you know, two or three days of the week and be like, okay, I beat the last game you recommended. What should I get now? And then I basically like would ask them 
unrelated video game questions and based on that determine what kind of video game they should play. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, but like, just like, oh, hey, on, I forget when Madden comes out, but like, oh, November 11th, last year Madden came out. So on 11, November 11th this year, you have to do just as good. I'm like, well, that was a Tuesday and now it's a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, um, so yeah, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this this guy didn't uh, do a great job introducing you to the hobby. Yeah, so honestly, at that point, um, it, we didn't have like a falling out. It was just more of a drift, you know. It was. Yeah, yeah. I, I. It's like you're going that I, way, and I would like to progress my life in a positive manner. See you later. <laughs> I mean, I had, I'm sorry, again, last dig, last dig. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, mean, I, I don't want to dig too much, but it was just like, okay, I thought we were doing one thing, and there was clearly something else going on, and I didn't know. I didn't, I was blindsided. So I essentially just kind of started fading from the hobby. I painted a little bit here and there. Uh, mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons why my space wolves still aren't painted. <laughs> um, but... Um, you know, I found a friend who uh, who was into it. I found another friend that was into it. So they weren't necessarily friends. So I got a little a little Warhammer over here, a little <laughs> Warhammer, Warhammer over there, and that was it. And then that was really it. I really liked Warhammer Fantasy, but like every time I made up a list, I'm like, shit. This arm is going to be eight hundred bucks, <laughs> <laughs> and that's before the tape measure and the <clears throat> movement trays and the book. I'm like, and I don't know anyone that plays this. I can't do it because that was the thing. It's like, yeah, I had like Morgan was interested in the fantasy armies and the fantasy aesthetic more than the forty k, but I couldn't, you know, at a thousand points, Warhammer Fantasy's not. Not all that conducive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, I tried, but you know, so I got. Um, so she liked High Elves and Skaven, so I got her the the Island of Blood. It, the Island of Blood. Yep. I got her that, and then I got myself the Dwarf Battalion box, which uh, I'm sure I've touted this before. I think on, on one of the previous episodes, but I never touted again. Yeah, my box was mislabeled, so. I was supposed to get a certain amount of sprues. There's two sprues in it, and you're supposed to get multiple sets of them. I didn't get enough of sprue A and got one more of sprue B. So they just sent me, instead of just like one extra sprue A, they sent me another box with an extra sprue in it. (laughs) So I essentially got, I got two and a half dwarf battalion boxes, which put me over a thousand points. Heck yeah. Which is what I used at the beginning of Age of Sigmar. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, but again, like I said, so those didn't do anything. Those sat for years <laughs> because I couldn't find anyone to play 40K, let alone fantasy. And, uh, you know, we had our local place, uh, Legions, where, you know, it's, uh, the, it's, it's the only game in town. It was a good game for a while, but it's the boomer that won't retire. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way I can it, describe yeah. it. <laughs> it. Well, it's it's funny. Like I've I've always I've always railed on them, but now with everything going on, they're they're not doing so hot. So I feel bad saying anything bad about them. <laughs> but, if I would <clears> like, said, there's a lot I could forgive in there. Like they have plenty of space they do their best sure their tables aren't really taken care of well that's fine i think that's more on yeah. that should be more on a player base that goes there to take care of drinks that's how i've always treated terrain at my my local stores yeah but if you're not going to have your plumbing and light fixtures fully and okay let's i even forgive the lights because there's enough lights there but if you're not going to yeah. have the plumbing working yeah that's where i'm just like you know well, mine which you I you've been bad. <laughs> You haven't been there uh, to to experience the ventilation issues, so yeah, I've never been there. Uh, it's been really crowded with uh, gamer funk. So back in my whenever I was playing the Space Wolves, they had well, they also have 
they had other people come in to run tournaments for them. Yeah. Okay. And so this place had, um, they were doing a beginner's tournament where it was just, you know, there was no prize. There was no nothing. You didn't, there was no penny requirement. It was 500 points, bring them in, have fun. Okay, cool. Uh, and then like they, there's people walking around to teach you how to play. And so the place was packed. Mm-hmm. And uh, so for, for everyone that doesn't know this place, it, it's actually a converted underground nightclub. So there's all this open space, dance floor, whole nine. And um, but, it, it is it is really it's really neat. There's a lot of potential for that venue. It's, yeah. And like I said, it, do I feel bad that they're hurting right now? Yeah, I feel bad that everyone's hurting right now, but they really let that place go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so they have a gigantic like warehouse esque storage space in the back that is open now, but at the time it was closed. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't go back there. All the other rooms were closed off, and their ventilation doesn't work. So four or five hours in, I'm getting to the point where I can't breathe. I literally drop out of the tournament so I can leave and get oxygen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It wasn't even stink. I would have been fine with stink over carbon monoxide poisoning. (laughs) Carbon (laughs) monoxide. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so that's that was kind of the last time that I regulared the place. And on top of that, like they're better now, but at the time, whenever I was building my space Marines, I went up to the person at the counter and said, Hey, I'm new to this and I'm really interested to figure out, you know, how to play and what to do. This is what I have for space Marines. What would be a good next thing to buy? And I got the response of, I don't know, man, I don't play space Marines. Sounds like uh, one of my <laughs> early responses from there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So, okay, again, as someone that works at a local Warhammer store now, mm-hmm. I know how Space Marines play. I know how Stormcast play. I know how Chaos plays. <laughs> like, I know how to play the armies that people come in and ask about all the time. This is what you do in a customer service environment. Just yeah. because I don't play the army. And again, I don't have to be fully... If someone comes in and being like, hey, I just bought some Liberators, what should I buy next? I don't need to know what the meta is. I don't need to tell them, hey, just so you know, you know, Stormcast, they're kind of low tier right now. Yeah. No, I'm going to be like, do you have a hero? Yeah, if not, oh, you have a hero? Cool. Hey, you want some shooting in there? Right. What do you think is a fun next edition? You got some paladins, you got some shooty boys, whatever you, you know, like, it's <laughs> basic. It <laughs> or, is so simple. Or the evil. What do your friends play? Oh, my friends got this. Oh, you want to take this unit. <laughs> <laughs> hard counter <Yeah>. go <laughs> oh you want uh uh and prime there you go that's <laughs> sell some prime kid move on out <laughs> have fun go paint it stormcast no no you gotta get in a gash that's what you need <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, i remember when, yeah. I, when i first went into legions I, i'd been there like once or twice before like back in eighth ed but like very rarely maybe just popping in for like a paint or something but yeah when i went in when age of sigmar was dropping and had been out for less than a year uh it's like hey where's your where's your warhammer stuff and they're like oh it's over there it's like oh do you have any age of sigmar stuff it's like all of our warhammer fantasy stuff is like half off right now because that game's dead it's terrible and i was just like oh <laughs> all right well i'm gonna go buy a lot of stuff because you're an idiot and yeah, yeah. vindication. Um, oh yeah. I also, also as a side, as a side project, while while I was, because again, I wanted to play, but I didn't really have anyone to play with. Right. Uh, uh, some of Morgan's coworkers at GameStop were playing um, War Machine. Yep. And I was like, okay, that's less models. That's probably cheaper. And at the time, it was. Huh. Uh, so I went Cador. And this was like the first army that I actually painted to a half decent level. Uh, this is where I started exploring washes and dry brushes. And I've never I've... seen this army, so I don't think it exists. <laughs> then next time you come over, man, it's okay. actually yeah. on my Facebook page. Yeah. Um, and again, it's what well, the time it was a 25 point army, which was essentially just 
the Warjack hero, and then other big Warjacks. <laughs> uh, and then I had the, because again, I went the uh, Cador, I think is what they're called, the, the Russian guys. Isn't Cador, uh, isn't that Necromunda? Uh, I don't know. You might need to fact check yourself on that. That might be, I think, or that's Cador. Cador's Necromunda. Yeah, I think it's K H A D O R is the, the War Machine faction. So I remember okay. that. Um, and can not to sh- not to shit on War Machine players, but game is really boring when you add range in and you have someone that doesn't. You don't have a lot of terrain. You just go and snipe the Warcaster. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the first time I, I first and only time I ever played that game. Um, I was at my local. Oh, there they are. Okay, door. Oh, those are really nice. Sorry, I was browsing your Facebook page trying to find them. <laughs> live on the podcast um yeah i had some interest in war machine um i was like yeah let me let me give a try and gentleman he's real big like he he i think he did play testing and all this sort of stuff for for the game and he's like yeah let me give you a game i'm like okay so he set me up with some stuff and we're walking through it and i'm playing it like i threw my hero out to go do stuff i'm like oh my hero can do a ton of stuff this is great and he's like he then killed my hero (laughs) <laughs> and I was just like, okay, what, what happened? And, and he's like, game's over. I won. I'm like, don't you think? No, I, 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 I was, was, was going to say, like, I don't. I, I told him, like, you don't need to, you don't need to not beat me. You don't need to let me win because I was an experienced yeah. war gamer. I don't need to worry about that. I'll make mistakes. It's fine. He didn't need to pull any punches. He didn't. That was fine. But you think before the game begins, he would have at least uttered the phrase. Now remember, if you lose this model, you lose the game. Yeah. Not once was that said until after I'd lost that model. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I bought one model that I thought looked cool. I painted it up, and that was my war machine career. Yeah, yeah. I remember we uh, we the first time we went to PAX East, there was someone doing a demo, and we played the demo. And got all excited, and it was we had a great time, and uh, came home, and uh, the con adrenaline had worn off, and then there was just no plan. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of had that with Guild Ball because we got Guild Ball I think, a couple times at Adepticon these past few years, and I come home with it. I'm like, oh man, it'd be cool to just paint this up. It's not many guys, and I should start the next Warhammer army, and then I give that Guild Ball away to someone in my area that actually plays <laughs> Guild Ball, and they're happy. Well, so that- it works out, but still, it's like I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah. Then so, but uh, so back to the the forty k timeline. Yeah. Shortly thereafter, um, you know, you and I met, and Over you Gundams. were in fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Over Gundam models, which I have a insane amount of. <laughs> yep, I have, a, I have a decent yeah. collection, but uh, yeah, you have an impressive, impressive allotment. Well, so that was, um, so I was. Early 2000s, you know, 2001, January 2001 is the first time I went to an anime convention. And I was going to anywhere between six to nine a year. I did that for like four or five years. Mm-hmm. Um, every anime convention I went to, I bought at least one Gundam model. <laughs> See, that was really interesting, actually, because I'm cleaning up my basement right now. I found a lot of them. Some of them are damaged, needs repairs, but I didn't collect Gundams. Which is odd, because I like Transformers, and I, I didn't hate Gundams and all, I just never got into the anime. I collected, like, those really nice resin statues. Okay, Mr. Money Bags. I, that's, I mean, not I was expecting. Res- I was expecting you to say plushies. No, 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 my, my wife was plushies. There's so many plushies in this house. <laughs> There's so many, but, um, yeah, I collected, like, resin figurines, like, varying sizes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know why I never got into Gundams till, till I really met you. Do you want to hear um, an entire audience cringe at once? You're going to be able to hear it from here. Oh, no. Uh, so <laughs> up until I started doing um, Warhammer, every one of those uh, parts for every single gun model was clipped out with toenail clippers. <laughs> yeah, I felt that cringe. I hit my... And not filed. Not a one of them filed. <laughs> Yeah, and then now you have like an amazing like filing set and all this sort of yeah. stuff. You're way over the top now. 
It's nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now now all the well, so thankfully you I didn't you have because you were doing pewter stuff with Lord of the Rings too, so you needed those files. Yeah. 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 Well, that's uh, well. So th whenever it came to War Machine, they were all metal at the time. Yep. And I had determined that a failed modeler has their minis fall apart on the table. <laughs> Uh, and so I determined that I don't want my models to fall apart even if I drop them. <laughs> <laughs> so I had some of the most convoluted pin jobs in the history of time where like, I would literally have my pin go in one side of the, the, the model and out through the other. And so the arms would fit into the same pin. Oh, geez. And then I would go blacksmithing style, clip off just about a millimeter before the shoulder, and then I would literally hammer in the pin so it plumed out. <laughs> <laughs> On top of that, uh, I found this, um, I forget the brand name, but there is uh, a, a type of, there's a company that sells super glue that distills their super glue before they bottle it. Okay. Uh, and so essentially you get one use of this bottle because that that no the 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 spout is going to clog <laughs> <laughs> and i've literally used that and i've got to the point where i've dropped these models from six feet to ground and it just dunk nothing <laughs> <laughs> nice so yeah so that's why whenever i see metal warhammer models i'm like i can't do it again <laughs> Can't go back, man. <laughs> I thought I thought you just were doing that because I put metal witch elves down all the time, and you're just like, oh, too many, too many. I was, now I know the reason why you're. P PTSD. You just keep. You just keep adding to the file. That's all. That's. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna do some plastic ones next. Three hundred. Uh, so I I'm gonna do at least another. I'm gonna do ten plastic immediately, which will put me at two fifty. Might expand that to to a unit of thirty, and then I'm only thirty away from three hundred witch elves. So it's kind of like, might as well. You got to man. I mean, like I said, and the reason I want to, like I said, is I, I want to, and I have the I have the thirty, plastic converted armored witch elves, which use a lot of the Trukari stuff. Um, I I just want to be able to run a fully plastic army. <laughs> just, I, I thought you were going to say I want to be able to put my army on the table and yell this is witches uh. <laughs> yeah yeah no that'd be fun too the other thing is too and then I have to get my, my shirt redone my 200 witch elf club shirt now it has to say 300 witch elf club shirt oh, no at that point you just need to get uh, a cloak and the clasp just says 300 and it's all bare chest oiled up uh, you can okay. with some abs I, I'm <laughs> Getting close to the abs. Like if I push Listen, it, don't worry, don't worry. I mean, I uh, Gerard out. Butler, Gerard Butler lived his life to get abs, and they still had to stencil them in. So don't. Yes, I know. <laughs> not a dig. It's not a dig. I'll, I'll... <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Three hundred witch elves and abs. Can I do it? Can I do it? The challenge has been laid. Right, Matt? Was that a challenge? Did you lay that forth? Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> That's the motivation I needed. And and here here's the here's the penalty if you don't do that. What? You have to wear a shirt. That's... Does the shirt have sleeves or not? That's your choice. Oh well, it's not that bad of punishment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, and then uh, and, and then, then I've been you in. You met the... me. I came in like a wrecking yeah. ball. I've ruined your life ever since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's so then like I said, so then we uh we started playing. I got the, the starter set. And that was uh, that was within the first year of Age of Sigmar, if I remember correct. That was uh when it came out. Was it okay, was it legitimately when it came out? <laughs> yeah. It was like the fifth of July. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're right, because I didn't have my Stormcast painted and we went to uh the tournament and I did I had a few storm cast with Phoenix Guard. That was my yep. army. Yep. I lost to the mighty Bill Souza with his <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I had uh 
dispossessed with with uh, one row of, of painted dwarf warriors and uh, the rest of your dwarf. <laughs> oh, yeah, because at the end times, army. Yep. Yeah. And, um, and I, again, I, it, it's funny. Like, I, I love the dispossessed. I loved how they played. I loved how they played in fantasy, at least in a theoretical sense. Um, the South Coast GT points came up, kept them right where I liked them. Yep. Uh, then... And the dreaded General's Handbook came out, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been a man at sea since. I remember just a small, small little side story. Back in Eighth Ed, during the end times, when I was painting my deep my, my dwarf army, I, I was I assembled it, I had it primed, and I was like, ah, I might sell it. I, I wasn't sure if I was fully going to go dwarfs. Not that I had anything against dwarves. As an elf player, I, I did enjoy them. Uh, Cause I do like me the Legolas Gimli pair up <laughs> and uh, one of my store owners, local store owners was interested in, in possibly buying it. I'm like, let's play a game. You, you run the army I have and see if you like it. We'll, we'll go from there. Top of turn one. I put down my, uh, my Phoenix guard, my sword masters, my mages, my, and my, and my two Phoenix. I have a frost heart and a flame spire. <laughs> he pulls out the cannon back then the cannon, like you had to, declare range and it bounced and all this sort of fun stuff and then you had to roll see how much damage it did so he he shot it at my frost heart phoenix bounced hit it rolled the dice one shot took it off the table i looked at him and said we're gonna finish this game i am not selling you or anybody else this army (laughs) and i kept it and i painted it out of spite, because I'm like, this that's the most dwarvy thing I, I, could, I could ever do. Yeah, my, um, if I remember correctly, my um, dream 8th edition fantasy dwarf list had, I think, three or four cannons in it. <laughs> yeah, I had three cannons and an organ gun. It yeah, I had no organ gun. But I had, uh, had all, um, all Thunderers, and um, iron breakers. Nice. Just a couple warriors, just to round out the list. Bunch of. Uh, I had the Thane, of course, because you had to have the BSB. Not that I remember what BSB stands for, but that's all the internet said. So battle center bears. Uh, <laughs> battle yeah. center bears. Jeez. All right. Well, I mean, that's uh, yeah, and the and the rest is history. Yeah, and and yeah. Right now you do, you do narrative war scrolls for multiple major narrative events across the country. Yeah, yeah. Almost yeah. all of them. Almost. Don't worry. Well, <laughs> you you helped run uh, uh, part of the Gibbering Dome. One of the, you were you were the the table master for one of the tables. You helped to call out. We both did yeah. last year. To I don't I don't know how to call twenty nineteen Adepticon. <laughs> Because technically yep, last yep. year's Adepticon didn't happen. It's, yeah. <laughs> so you've had a major hand in the uh, narrative scene. You're you're like that. Uh, you're like you're that man the, behind the curtain. <laughs> the, hidden, the hidden force. Well, that's what's funny is is like, <clears throat> you know, I'll be talking to people and, uh, I'll be like, oh, you know, Bill Sows. I'm like, oh, I know Bill. And I'm like, what? Why do you know Bill? <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, Aaron. I know Aaron. Oh, Mike Brandt. I know Mike Brandt. Like. Wow, you know what? You don't talk to these people. <laughs> I know it's, that's what you and I both do. That it's just like just just know everybody. It's it's amazing. <laughs> well, it's I amazing think. how many people <laughs> want to talk to you whenever you're just nice and friendly and you genuinely care about who they are and what they do. Life's yeah, not yeah. that hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we toot our toot our horns even more? Uh, I I mean, if I could reach, that's no. Oh, well, okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, like I said, it, it, that was that's the whole point of of this uh, episode seven of Strength Hammer podcast, 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 podcast. So I know we're we're incredibly long, nah, but should I, I? I don't care anymore. Should I? Uh, should I at least touch on my uh, my yeah, project? Yeah, yeah. G- give us give us a brief right now because I do want to dive into this in a future podcast, like get yeah, really we'll... deep into it. But give give a brief rundown of what the project is, why it came about, and your general goal. Yeah. So as far as that goes, um, you know, whenever 
again, whenever the General's Handbook one came out, it, it it's pretty undisputable that that the dispossessed were not uh, <laughs> they, they weren't given any any gold medals. That's with the exception of, with the exception of warriors, because they were in every yeah. mixed order army. <laughs> well, you had ten. Um, Unit of 10 for 90 points with a shield that put them in a four up save. And if they didn't move or charge, they got to reroll all failed saves. Uh, and you could also take a great weapon with it, which got them a three up, four up, or four up, four up with a minus one rend. It's hard to beat that. Mm-hmm. Um, but whenever KO came out, I was really excited about it. I think a lot of people were. Because um, even though, again, I have a Fire Slayer army, it's not really my style. Um, and I think I think fire slayers just do that. I think it's a hit or a miss, really. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and I have nothing against them. I think their play style is is awesome. I think the way that it's set up is really cool. Well, but for me, it's just like how I am with elves. I want to have every elf army because I'm a yeah. fan of elves. You want to have every dwarf army because you're a fan of dwarves. Yeah. Or didn't. And then, um, but so whenever it came to Ko, you know, I bought into the army. I started getting things going. Um, you know, the clown car list was was the end all beat all. I was trying to find something else because I didn't want to just go straight web list. Um, but I eventually caved and was like, okay, we'll we'll go with the web list because that's how you win. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the ch- that's the way. If you win, that's the way you do it. And then that's like <laughs> literally as, as soon as I finished my frigate and got everything all together and got the list put together is when all the nerves came in. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, it's for me who's still like, even though I've been playing forever, I've never really stopped to learn the ins and outs and start and got all the, the nitty gritty and all the knowledge that I should have at this point. And KO is not the place to learn it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so whenever, you know the rumors and murmurs of the the re-release of the second edition book. I was really ho- hyped. I was really the my main hope for the book was that it was going to be a little more forgiving. Um, I was hoping for some survivability, some sort of. Uh, I hope for a lot of stuff that just didn't happen, mm-hmm. uh, and so and again. Uh, whenever, because I'm going to be doing a video series about this as well. Yep. Uh, be where on, I go, is it going to be on the Strength Hammer channel? Yes. Okay. Right. If you'll have me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Matt's corner. Um, I'm going to go into such granular analysis that most people are not going to want to watch because, again, I'm not a professional. I'm not, not even necessarily good at the game. Uh, I just like. Like, like I just like systems. Yeah. Right. I like systems. I like coming up with, with with how things work and stuff like that. And so it's not going to be in the meta. It's not going to be um it's not meant to be super powered. It's not meant to be underpowered. It might be super powered, it might be underpowered. It's just I'm kind of doing what GW does where they get the model and they come up with a rule for it. Right. Um so again, I'm not stating that the army is bad. Uh, you know, we know it's not top tier, uh, but we know people win with it. So I'm again, I'm not trashing the army. I'm not trashing the book. I'm not doing anything negative in any way. It's just, it's not the way I wanted it to be. And I started thinking about like, oh, well, this could do this. And this model could do that. And so things started to fall in line and it got to the point where I was thinking about it way too much. And I, <laughs> once again, like we talked about at the beginning with D and D characters, I needed an outlet for it. So I decided, okay, well I already have ex- you know, experience writing war scrolls. Yep. From the, from there to war scrolls for Nova open and now LVO. So why not go the rest of the way with polishing up war scrolls that work together and then also allegiance abilities and all the uh, and everything else. Um, right now, where I am in the process, I have all the war scrolls done. Um, 
and they're super fun, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> the the wording probably needs to get hammered out a little bit because once again, one of my weaknesses is being a little too complex. <laughs> Uh, because again, and I'll be the first person to state, whenever I see a complex war scroll that I didn't write, I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> you're like halfway done complex... reading it, you're just like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, but whenever it's the complex war scroll I write, I'm like, well, duh, it makes perfect sense. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> what the... that's, that's rules writing. Um, and it's very interesting. It's So I'm trying to build this army so it is more forgiving. Mm-hmm. Things have defined roles, and there's a big reliance on heroes to give buffs to make them, um, to push them outside of the, the role they have. So, like, um, right now, just to go a little in depth, just as an example, uh, as of right now, Sky Wardens are going to be the uh, hammer unit or the anvil unit, I'm sorry. So they're going to be your anvil. They're going to be a high mobility anvil unit to try and hold things up while you can go in the back line and capture stuff while things are trying to get past the sky wardens. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you're going to be able to take heroes to push them into another role as well. So they might be able to be that hammer for a round if you expend some resources. Uh, So hopefully it's like that fulcrum where if you push, if you apply pressure in the right place at the right time, you break through. Otherwise, you're just kind of hammering on an anvil yourself. Right. Uh, And so I said, so what's fun is from a design's perspective, making a defensive army is hard and making a shooting army is hard. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to make a defensive shooting army that doesn't make your player or your opponent go, you know what? You have fun. I'm going to get a Coke. <laughs> as, as someone who played a defensive shooting army of dwarves in 8th edition fantasy, that's exactly what it is. Right. Um, and so I'm trying to find, trying to walk that balance. I'm trying to um, trying to find that. And and I think I'm getting there. I think, uh, I think there's a couple things will have to be toned down, but well, I, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it when it comes to completion and playing against it too. And actually, maybe that will be, maybe that will be our first battle report on this channel. Right. Maybe I don't we know. Can, we use a tabletop <laughs> simulator, huh? No, I'm gonna come over. No, I, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 no, I'm we need to play tabletop simulator while wearing masks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so so the main goal is I'm going to finish up. Uh, I'm going to finish up doing the allegiance abilities. Finish up um, artifacts, command traits, prayers, which are currently not in the army. Um, yeah. So well, so as far as that goes, in my opinion, one of the things that defines dwarves or dwarven is actually. Let me back up go back over the one of the whys because I one of the whys of why I'm doing this is because I feel like there's a way to make KO feel like Dwarden while still doing something new because I feel like the KO almost is uh, subverting expectations almost to subvert expectations okay. uh, for no other real reason you know <clears throat> they're, they're just running away or, from what is the Tolkien right. desk just for the purpose of running the exact opposite direction in a way. Right. And again, it's not even necessarily because like, I feel like they've found their own space within, uh, you know, while being separated from the Tolkien stuff. Oh yeah. yeah while being absolutely. similar, but like, what's a dwarf slow moving, uh, um, got a beard, drink ale, right. Hold you got a beard, you got, uh, your high defense, your far shooting. And so this army came out, Quick moving, low defense, still shooting, but now an oddly high volume, bad profile shooting, <laughs> <laughs> which again is is needed in this sort of situation. But and even then, even then, you got into the narrative where you know you they held grudges, but they had um, they still had um, 
honor. You know, they yeah. were still, you could still put them under the list of good guys. Right. Whereas the, the narrative for these guys come out, oh, you pay them money, they'll, they'll polish your knob. Doesn't matter who you are. You know, that's, <laughs> uh, and I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> well, I, I think they have been rocking that back a little bit. They've, yeah, they they've, have. They've pulled the dwarfs bit. back and made them more traditional in mindset on the lower end. Um, they, but they kind of acknowledge, like, especially the Fire Slayers, are just like, yeah, they, they sort of did that. We don't talk about that, although as new grudge against you. Okay, all right, sure enough. Then. Yeah, so so that's one of the things is, um, so now one of the narrative things I'm changing that I'm not going to get too much into in the video because, again, no one really cares about my character, you know. Uh, but hold on. Don't ever let that stop you. <laughs> well, that's why I'm going to get into it a little bit here now. Uh, we're we're going to do a full, we'll do a full, full lore segment about your character. Okay. Like a whole episode. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Say, 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 but, let, uh, let, let, let them, let them dangle. Give a taste, give a taste, but don't, uh, don't give it all away. So, yeah. So as far as that goes, uh, essentially they were, you know, they were essentially dwarves in the sky. You know, they, they all had their sky port, which was essentially their mountain. And they basically had assumed that all of the mortal realms were realms were essentially taken over by chaos. So they stayed in the clouds. Right. Whenever the mortal, whenever the cities of Sigmar were, um, discovered and settled, you know, they found these cities and I decided to split the difference between what dwarves were and what KO is. So they've decided to protect these cities they're essentially the air force for the cities of Sigmar now, and they still get their commerce in because they have some stuff that the cities don't have. Okay. So they still set up trades and stuff like that. So you still have your commerce. See, see what I like. One of the reasons why I, I, I can't wait to see more of this is because this gives me like just a little bit of a urge to not do your level because the Dodge King <laughs> Battle Tome is in a great place, but like take that basicness, like the war scrolls that exist, and so I want to change your war scrolls. And then make my own version of a Terathian cult. So like oh, custom, custom battalions, uh, maybe like a slightly adjusted allegiance ability that obviously plays in a little bit with Kraith. Maybe if it was like <laughs> what I wish Kraith could be. But um, and then like maybe custom war scroll for just Terathian herself. But like so yeah. much easier endeavor than what you're taking on. But uh, yeah, I just like hearing that yeah. because like and because no, then we could take these custom battle tomes to Holy Havoc and walk away with the hardware all of the hardware what are you talking about we're taking this to adepticon that's all right gt that's we're just gonna slip it in there <laughs> but yeah right so like the one, of the other things is, um, one of the other things is i feel like that i really liked about the dwarves of fantasy was how anti-magic they were yeah and so <clears throat> now the only real anti-magic you get in the game is if you go the main sky port or if you go was it you go one of the units? I forget exactly how you get. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But you have to do something specific to get dispel. So now I've already made one of the characters is a flat out priest, and okay. they get a buff. They get small buffs through prayers, but then their main thing is dispels. So these are the the Dwarden who are just like we're going to be carriage on overlords up in the sky, and they uh they decided to not pull away in their sky vessels while the rune priest was in the bathroom at the pit stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're exactly. like, let's take him exactly. with us. Yeah. The, sure, uh, this would be a so, funny joke to leave him behind, but we need him. Yeah. The, the navigator is going to be taking heavy inspiration from a rune priest. Okay. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. The, um, now one thing, like I said, if anyone actually watches any of this and takes any of it seriously, they're going to flip their lid because like I'm breaking <laughs> so many conventions. And um, one of the things uh, to go a little spoiler, a little tease, if you will, one of the allegiance abilities is you take a boat and you build a crew for that boat in a 40K manner. So you okay. have to you have to buy a captain. Uh, so you have to choose either a hero or a sergeant of a unit, and then you can choose. Okay, now I want um, I want an Arcanaut. Uh, now I want a Thunderer. Now I want a special weapon. 
another special weapon. Oh, and so, okay, so like more very granular type of unit building. Right. And again, it's only an option. You don't have to do it, but the list will be set up to heavily benefit you for following it that way. Okay. Uh, but if you go with a, if you take them as allies, then that's the elite's ability is gone. You have to buy them like normal. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So it, it's going to be interesting. I look forward to hearing more about it. Like I said, and you kind of give me this slight inspiration to uh, maybe do like Tarathian supplement for the Daughters of Cain battle tome. I'll call mine. Yeah. Mine's not a battle tome. Yours is a battle tome. Mine's a supplement. <laughs> Yours, you have a chamber. That's... <laughs> I'm going to be that one page, kind of like, uh, was it the City of Lethys from uh, uh, Malign Sorcery? Anyway. I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember which or one. It's like, it's like the one page, here's a new Legion's ability, go, but I'll have I'll do some battalions and stuff. Like the White Dwarf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's here's the White Dwarf Tarathian Cauldron. I... Yeah, so once it's done, I'm going to uh, do a series of videos. Uh, like I said, they're probably going to be very long, and they're probably going to be a little a little dry because I'm going to do... Essentially, I'm going to boil down each war scroll that exists, analyze the abilities, say what's good about it, what, what's, what I don't like about it, and then I'm going to go, and this is what I came up with. This is the changes. These are why I made the changes. Um, Actually, and go from there. And, I think that'd be good, and I think... Uh... It might be interesting. You might want to consider having Neil on as a fellow KO, blah, KO player. <laughs> and he can ask you questions maybe that would be more insightful to help. Yeah, uh, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. I would ask stupid questions. So this might be a, the videos that I, I watch and, and click like on my own videos. because. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have beards under their helmets? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hot damn. I like this book. Yeah, so some of the challenges I gave myself was um, no new models. I have to work with yep. what I got. Yep. All models that are produced have to be made or have to be included. The only thing I'm not going to worry about is the Underworlds unit because I mean, not they're, they're not bad. Just put them in as they are. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Just bring them as is. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I also wanted to the other goal I have for the other challenge I have myself is no higher than top of middle tier. <laughs> well, I, I would also, I know you've went, you've went through your war scroll, so you probably hate me for bringing this up, but um, allow yourself to uh, kind of do what they did with flesh eater courts. You know, flesh eater courts, there was a kit you could buy and you can make two different things or like, or even like the Dodgers cane where like the witch elves never really used shields. But now they do, because why not? It fits. So maybe even look at the box of the sprues. Like, can you make something different out of that box using that same sprue? Well, I've already done that a little bit. Okay, cool. No, I, I was just like, you should do that, definitely. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you have. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the... Um, it, it's... It'll be fun. It'll be interesting. Uh, I don't know if anyone will like it, but I, I know I will, so... <laughs> I'm excited for it, because you are passionate about it. And that's what I want to see, and I can't wait to be crushed by it or kick it into teeth and watch a better version come out. <laughs> watch you cry. <laughs> no, this is the uh, this is the kill your favorite character cannon. I point it at your favorite character <laughs> and you roll dice. Yeah, I mean, I have I have um, you know the heat seeking Marathi missile. Okay, um, that's fine. Where if it's uh, if you if you roll a die and the die stays on the table, you just get to remove one Rathi model off the table. So here's an interesting thought. <laughs> Actually, no, like like seriously, like funny thing, because Marathi has the ability where she can't be take more than three. Yeah. But the endless spells break it because they happen before the turn. What if you had actually had like a timed grenade or like a missile, whatever you want, fi figure oh, out the steam version. I didn't version. realize the wording is like that. So, so you could you could you could have something that launches and target something and hits before the next round begins for like D six damage. Okay. There you go. Yeah, it's. I could I could easily adjust something there. I think yeah. Be, so one of the things I did that'd be a neat mechanic for shooting army. So I um, carpet the first bomb. one. I, I started with the named character um, Brock. Yeah. Uh, and I made up his war scroll and everything. And I, the next day I read it, I'm like, 
well, you forgot this ability. You misspelled that. You didn't word that properly. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to write everything in a Word doc, and then whenever I'm ready, throw it into the PDF. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, so changing stuff is, is super easy at this point. The only problem is, thankfully, for the first time, I'm happy to have such a low unit count because, essentially, I'm trying to remember all buffs and how it interacts with every unit simultaneously. <laughs> well, after you perfect this, um, and before we publish it in an actual hardbound book, which I, 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 I saw people do that. Someone did it at Realms at War when I went a few years ago. And yeah. they actually, what they did is you could get a calendar that has like a hardback binding, <laughs> and they just pr used that on like Vistaprint or something. It, it looked stunning, and it wow. was just a book. So we're going to do that with yours, yours. But you also need to, do, to figure out the uh, your war cry rules. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Yep, yep, that'd be cool. Easy enough. Yeah, I look forward to that. And I said, well, there'll be a lot more of that coming whenever it gets ready. Um, so, yeah, that, that'd be exciting. Yeah, like I said, the videos aren't going to come out until everything is done and polished. So it's still going to be a bit. Um, because I want to try and have it be a little bit more of a professional grade. So even whenever... Um, you know, whenever I say something or someone disagrees with it, hopefully it's put out to such a extent that people can see them. At least I'm not just trying to come up with something super powered and, and move on. Well, hey, it's it's the internet. People will always hate something. For oh, yeah, reason. yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, as long as I'm not giving them, <laughs> as long as I'm not inviting it. <laughs> right, right. That'd be fun. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I think... Uh... We're uh, coming up on, on two hours here of recording, so I think uh, it'd be a good place to leave it off because we is is a work night. So we got yeah, uh, yeah. got, got our long commutes tomorrow, waking up from our bed, getting our showers, and walking <laughs> to our computers. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been, uh, it's been a blast. But, yeah. Uh, Matt, where can they find you? Uh, well, you can't. Can't. Okay. Can't find me. I'm not on the internet. None. You can find me through uh, through messaging Chuck. <laughs> yep. Which uh, my Twitter handle is strengthhammer underscore, or my Instagram handle, which is strengthhammer underscore. Yeah. You if you want to at me on Twitter, you can send it to Lazenka NTM. That's L A Z E N C A N T M. Uh, like I said I don't tweet because I, I don't feel like having. Random people on the internet tell me my opinion is wrong. So <laughs> right, that's that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I already sit here and we wind down, I remind everybody to stay stormcast strong. Matt, will you take us out with a brush for hire commercial, please? Sure. One, sure, one last one for our sponsor, Brush for Hire. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. You know, I had one prepared for the last episode, and I can't remember what it was, so I have to come up with a new one. I know. It's new every time. That's fine. Deep space. Nothing but stars. Inside constellations. Here, there. You get your little box thing, go, I want a ham sandwich, and it materializes a ham sandwich. You know what that materializer can't do? Produce painted miniatures. That's why even in the future, you're still going to need brush for hire don't paint those models yourself what are you some sort of lower class pleb no you're an upper class non-pleb don't paint your own models that's what sean's for brush for hire <laughs>